chat session it's the opportunity for you to hear what's happening locally and for you to just be able to ask any questions and hopefully we can help you where we can i'm going to start by handing over to wendy if that's okay thank you uh uh, Louise, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Wendy Overwellborn and I'm the Executive Director for People and Communities. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. So this is the second session I think we've done this year. And as Louise said, it's a very informal session where um, I think Tony and Sheila are going to uh, provide a, a short update on the work that we've been doing around the special education needs and disability strategy and the work um, uh, in that area. And I think Roger's doing a presentation as well, but this is very much about an opportunity for you to ask any questions. It hasn't got to be related to the presentation and we will do our best to uh, answer them. One of the things I just wanted to say uh, before we start today is that, you know, I, I, I genuinely, and we uh, as an officer team, know that the, the last year, 18 months have been uh, incredibly challenging for all of you who are caring for your children and you know we have really appreciated the way you've worked with family boys and others uh, in terms of us you know trying our best um, to support you where we can but you know we cannot deny that things have been incredibly challenging for you um, so again I appreciate you giving your time today to uh, uh, come and talk to us and like I say please ask any questions uh, you want and we'll do our best to answer Louise, did you want people to uh, introduce themselves, the officers? Yes, please, if that's okay for everybody. Nice. So if I start with Tony. Hi, I'm Tony Bailey. I'm Assistant Director for Send and Inclusion across Peterborough and Cambridgeshire. Thanks, Tony. Sheila? Hi, I'm Sheila Sullivan. I'm Head of SEN and Inclusion Services for Peterborough. Thank you. And Roger? Hi, it's uh, Roger Valentine. I'm the Peterborough Information Network uh, Officer, so I work a lot on the Local Offer website pages. And Roger, you're going to give us an update on the Local Offer today, aren't you? I assume so. I'm coming to this blind, but yeah, no problem. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Uh, Louise, did you want to do any other introductions? Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Louise Ravenscroft, I'm Chief Operating Officer for Family Voice Peterborough. And is there if I just ask um, Laura and Asta, if you could just quickly introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Laura Tilly, I'm a parent carer rep, and I've, uh, I'm also the chair of the Peterborough Area Down Syndrome Group. Hi, yeah, my name is Asta. I'm a parent carer representative of Family Voice Peterborough. Nice to meet you all, or see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Asta. I'm happy um, to move on if um, everybody wants to, if that's right with you, Wendy. Yeah, that's brilliant. So shall we ask Tony and Sheila to give us a, 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 an update, really? Is that okay? And if, uh, if people have got questions as we go along, if you just want to put your... Um, hand up and then I'll manage the hands through the participation. Right. Okay, um, I've got, I'm going to try and share my screen because I've got a, a couple of slides just to prompt uh, the conversation, if that's okay. And then I'm going to try and go between two uh, presentations, so bear with me in the middle if you wouldn't mind. Um, this will be a real test for Tony, we'll see how good he is at it. Let, 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 let's see. Okay, how's that? No. Oh, yes. Can you see me now? Yeah, yeah. just need to put it on slideshow, Tony. Slideshow, okay. Happy? Fantastic. Right, okay. So I'm just going to give you a quick, um, uh, there's obviously loads and loads been going on around the SEND uh, landscape. So I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of um, some updates and some of the areas that we've been covering and also provide you with some feedback that we've had um, around services as well um, and Sheila's going to uh, um, jump in in some of the slides to help out. So we're going to start with some good news. Um, Tony, you're, Tony, you're a little bit quiet. Can you speak up a little bit? I'm a little bit quiet. Can you, that's can better. You, is that better? Yes, that's better. Thank you. Right. I, 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 sorry if I'm shouting. 
Okay, so good news. Um, Attendance-wise, uh, we've got, you know, for special and children with educational health care, uh, care plans and social workers, we are well above the England right and well above the Eastern right in terms of our attendance, uh, which we're really proud of. Uh, we've managed to maintain that throughout the whole of the um, COVID period in terms of our percentage um, and to be above that. But in special schools, there'd be 95.3% at this point in time is uh, particularly impressive, I think. So I think we're, we're doing a fantastic job there. So I think it's worth just um, you know, sharing that with you. Um, uh, in terms of send data feedback, uh, we've, we've also done some um, fantastic work in the landscape as well. Sheila, do you want to just cover this? Yeah, we thought we'd put this in. It's just for the last month, but the, the kind of figures you've got here are really representative of what we've been getting since January. And we're really pleased with it because actually some of our figures last month were last year, should I say, we're really honest about this stuff. We're a bit ropey. We really had a lot of staff absence. You had the massive corona impact. And last year we were not happy with our figures. But just to give you a, a taste of, of where we are in the month of May. OK, which is the last time we reported. So we've received in the month of May, we received 23 requests for assessment. Give you some idea of what goes through. We agreed 18 of them um, in terms of carrying out an assessment and deciding not to go ahead with an EHCP. We issued um, one what's called written feedback. So all the rest went through as EHCPs. We um, produced um, EHCPs within timescale, the draft EHCP on 93% of occasions. And in terms of the final, so issuing on time, um, 100%. So that's the final on time. We had four mediations and currently we've got seven um, ongoing tribunals. So those figures are, are figures that were, were, were pretty in terms of numbers of tribunals, were very low mediations. We've been trying to, we want to give people access to mediation, but we'd, we'd like to get the decision right the first time. But hopefully four then is a kind of lowering of the figure. So there you go. Happy to take any questions. Thanks. Okay, if we move on to our joint send strategy, um, this is our joint sense strategy, which is a, a huge slide to uh, take on board. Um, you will probably, hopefully, be aware that we have a joint sense strategy out there, and that our three main themes um, are send is everyone's business, identify, respond to needs early, and deliver at the right place at the right time. Um, what we've had to do in order to make it manageable is to um, you know, cl clarify what our priorities are. The priorities were decided um, in co-production with um, all stakeholders, including um, uh, Family Voice and, and other parent groups. And uh, we've decided to kind of go towards um, managing this in a kind of phased approach. And we've got um, our phase one priorities, which will move from May to May each year. Uh, and those priorities are going to be the following areas. Um, local offer, which we'll hear from Roger in a minute. Communications, which I've got a little bit of a feedback for you on later. Getting support and access to getting support early and access to send support, legal compliance, uh, the role and arrangements of the DCO, opportunities for young adults, uh, 18 to 25, if you like the, the PFA element, the preparation for adult element, uh, joint planning commissioning and quality assurance in send. And we, we have been working um, over the, um, uh, the, 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 the lockdown period on all of these areas, but we've decided to focus on them directly as, uh, within the phased approach. And each of the three themes from our um, uh, strategy will be led by a lead sponsor. Um, I'm leading one of the areas, the first theme, um, Wendy's leading the second theme, and Oliver Haywood from our commissioning, he's an assistant director of commissioning, he's leading on the third theme. And so we've now got a governance approach, uh, which will move towards what we hope will be a face-to-face -face conference in March, where we will look at what we've been able to do and feedback and then agree what our priorities will be for phase two. Um, we've decided to go down this route because we we realized over the last 18 months that priorities can change fairly quickly um, given the, the circumstances that we have to face. So we, we split it up into year slots, phase at a time, so that we can be sure that we're focusing on the right things in the in the years to come. And we, we also need to be looking at whether or not our sense strategy needs to needs to change because who, you know, 18 months ago, nobody could have, could have, would have, would have guessed that we would be in this situation now. 
And I guess we need to just be open to the fact that things could continue to change to some extent over the next year or so. So that's just, just to give you a feedback on where we're at with that. Um, the written statement of action, um, you will know that we had an inspection across Peterborough and, and following that area inspection, we had a written statement of action. Um, we have been working through that throughout the process. Um, we, we've got no areas of red. We, we rag rate all of the areas in terms of the, the, area, the written statement of action and we've got none that are on red and all are making really good progress. We have been working closely with the DfE and CQC, uh, including some deep dive sessions where they've been supporting us in preparation for our revisit. And the revisit will be to come and have a look at the areas that they outlined as needing more work. But the feedback so far has been wholly positive. And we've been really pleased with that. We've been gathering some feedback from a range of partners and I'll move on to that in a second in more detail. Um, and we've also been linked in with some multi-agency training um, at, Sheila, do you want to just talk a bit about that? Yes, it's on our written statement of action and it's been really too important to us. So that's training that doesn't just involve our educational professionals, but it's training so that everybody in health, social care, you know, beyond understands what's involved in, in terms of their responsibilities, particularly in statutory processes. Um, the last training for this year happened this, this week, uh, earlier this week. It was specifically for social care, so targeted training on one uh, of our, of our um, you know, uh, participants. And we had over 60 social workers join the session. I haven't seen the feedback yet, but hopefully what we'll be able to see is the impact of that session in in terms of responsibilities come through in the quality assurance of the reports that social care contribute to the statutory process. So next year, phase two of the multi-agency training will be training that is in itself multi-agency. It'll be topic-based. So rather than focus on particular groups, we'll focus on particular topics and hope to get and encourage a kind of wide range of professionals to join each meeting. Great. And I think it's worth just saying that, you know, throughout the whole of the written statement of action approach, family voice has been a key, a key part of that. They've been involved throughout. I know that many of you that are on this call today will have been in, in, involved in some of the interventions and some of the direct work that's been happening across the whole of the, that themes. So, you know, thank you to everyone who's been doing that. It's been a, a great piece of joint and collaborative work. Um, our revisit schedule is we're expecting the revisit to come soon. We, we probably think that we, we would be unlucky to have it this side of the summer holidays. And so that will lead us into probably looking at the autumn term for our revisit. Uh, that, 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 that is not a re-inspection. They just come and they look at the written statement of action. They look at the areas that we've, uh, that we've addressed through that. But there will be an, an element of asking us how we cope with the COVID situation. Uh, mm -hmm. in that. So we, we, do, we need to be open to that as an additional element. Right now, I'm going to try and be clever now because I'm going to go back to the feedback stuff and I've got a separate um, event. So I need to stop sharing and then share again on a different screen. Here we go. Tony, I've got a question from Laura. Are we able to share this slideshow with everyone afterwards, please? Yeah, sure. Happy to share it. Yeah, yeah. One second. Screen two. Asta, did you have a question? Just ask some questions while I... Uh... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless my cat just, you know, climbed on a keyboard. Let me check. <laughs> I don't think so. I can't see any hands. I'm watching it, Louise. Just oh. to say good... Sorry. No. I was just going to fill... Sorry. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, so just to go back to feedback, we've got this uh, presentation for feedback. Now there's a video here, so I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers uh, to see if this works, but I'm gonna press play and see what happens. Just some hands in the air. Fabulous, okay. Sheila, do you wanna go through this? Yeah, we thought it worth sharing this. Uh, it's a warts and all thing. So as part of our quality assurance, we're trying to increase the amount of feedback 
that we get over the statutory process. Um, I'm talking a lot about statutory processes, but I would highlight to you that we're getting feedback about all of our SEN and inclusion services and the wider services like ASD, um, services uh, support teachers for HIV. I've got some tremendous feedback, uh, especially over this COVID period for the work they've done. But this is particularly about the statutory process. So you can read it. I'm talking so you can read basically. So you've got good and you've got bad but where we get something that we think mm, you know uh, that's still not good we want to pick something up that then feeds into that quality assurance process and you can see here that the, there's some lovely forgive me I've, I've we've left in the named officers it really helps them so uh, they don't mind and I hope you don't mind them them but Lorraine's getting a bit of a shout out there um but uh the, the last point is about you know annual reviews and how long and we've not hidden it we've had some real issues with backlogs I am pleased to say we haven't totally cracked it yet but in terms of the backlog now I think our backlog is 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 only really months rather than years. And I think we had about 40 on the backlog as opposed to, I think we had 650 at one stage and I'm being totally honest here. At any given time, we should be holding about 170 annual reviews because it's just, we've got two, 2010 and growing EHCPs. So if you imagine they've all got to be reviewed every year, then you come out with a kind of average you're holding at any one time. And at the moment, the team are holding holding in terms of live about 140 so they appear to be keeping on top of it but we've still got a long way to go and our emphasis next year is on training and working with our schools and settings over annual reviews and that real focus on the transition points thank you Tony yeah and again I said warts and all um, this is a, a what could be better, what we what we want to do better. So um, the first six weeks uh, is something that a, a parent feedback highlighted here. So we knew this was an issue and we took a look at our data about how many EHCP, EHC needs um, requests were turned down and then overturned at mediation. OK, because we do invest in mediation. And it seemed to us that too many were being turned and then agreed at mediation. And when we looked at why that was, what the officers were saying was all this evidence and new information came out at mediation that hadn't been actually put into the original request. Now it's our responsibility as, as a local, um, you know, as, as a local authority to ensure that we have all the information that we need. So what we did is we put in a dedicated officer um, so a dedicated role for those first six weeks to make sure that we were getting everything that we needed. And there's a little bit of feedback about that at the end of these slides. But I would say to you, do you know what? You can't please all the people all of the time. We did get some feedback from schools to say, how do we make the process harsher? Because, you know, there was this, this officer ringing up asking for all this information. But I take that as a good thing. I think the other is really about, um, yeah, it, it's self-explanatory, but explained by some of our quality assurance processes. OK, next slide is self-explanatory. Really good. And this final slide here is to do with that new officer. Oops. We, oops, it's gone. But that was really focusing. We wanted immediate fo uh, feedback on that. And you can hear what was being said about that first six week process and what parents are feeling and our 4.8 average we're getting good feedback on that a lot of people responding for us we're really pleased with it so it seems that that role is working great uh, any questions on what we've covered so far while i go back to the original presentation Hi, um, it's Shaz here. I just wanted to make a comment rather than a question. Um, I think the process is really positive. It's really good. However, I am still finding that there, despite have going through the process of bidding in the HCP with um, schools, except there still tends to be some mistakes in terms of what's written, what was said. So I think we need to sort of focus on that process as well. And also a lot of information gets left from earlier on. So for example, with my son, it was information from his last school, which was still lifted and put into his recent EHCP. So I think it's just making more aware of being very careful what's written and what's presented. But other Thanks. than that, I think the process is really positive. Thank, Thank you for that. OK, um, we'll move on then. Um, I'll just go back to this. Can we see that? 
Can you see that? Is that okay? Am I loud enough? Yes. Great. Okay. So we've got a new inclusion service in Peterborough. Uh, we did have an inclusion event uh, recently with all of our schools to, to, distract, to, to explain how it's going to work. So I'm just going to very quickly just uh, show you this is a very complicated uh, flow diagram of the new inclusion process, which I'm not uh, expecting you to uh, fully understand, but you can have a copy of this and I'm happy to meet and, and discuss it with you uh, individually in the process. But what I wanted to highlight is that we've got a, a, a three level system now, but um, at send support to be a level of uh, consultation with our behavior support service, which we've developed and being led by Anna Wayland uh, across Peterborough now. Uh, and there's a, the second level of support is it, 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 it includes referrals to the, the mask panel and behavior panel, which we put in there. And then we've got a third level of support for children who are excluded uh, and, and you know we need to maintain uh, an, an approach from them. And we've got a new PRU in place. And the PRU was um, transferred over to Thomas Deacon um, Academy, uh, Education Trust. Be that um, um, recently, uh, well, a year ago actually, almost a year ago. Um, Sheila? Pardon? Sorry, you've got your hand up. Can you not hear me? Okay. I was trying to signal to you, I couldn't unmute that it, the voice was going a bit phony. I was trying to help, sorry. <laughs> okay, so thank you. So, um, uh, so this 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 has this this is a, a flow chart that all schools will now follow, and hopefully, will improve our inclusion service to some degree. Uh, in order to um, support that flow chart, we've come up with an inclusion vision. It's quite a long one because it's, it, there's lots of detail in there. So I won't read it to you, and obviously, you, I'll share this with you for you to do that. But what I would like is if anybody has any feedback on this as an approach uh, through the vision. Um, we'd be really interested in that because we, we are working with schools to kind of refine it so it becomes our vision. This is, if you like, this is the local authority staffing position. And then we'll hopefully we'll be in a position where we can have a joint vision for our inclusion approach. Um, and I'll just move on. I tell you that it's got two sections and then it's. Only we're losing you again. We're losing Sorry, your voice again. Oh, do you know what it is? I think it's the the microphone is right next to uh, the fan on my laptop. So when it's oh. to cool down, is it because you're fine? You're fine now with you putting your your mouth nearer it. Okay. There we go. My head looks massive now. But... That's better. Now you look fine. Okay. Okay, so that, that so that inclusion vision is there for you to kind of absorb and think about and feedback on. Please let us know what you think about that and share with um, parents as well out there. It's underpinned by some uh, some some key elements that we call proactive and 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 well, proactive ones are these ones. We think that everything starts with quality teaching in the classroom, um, and 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 that young people should be taught how to self-regulate. And we want to push forward collaboration and cooperation and, and confidence to be flexible, i.e. we want be, to be able to look at an issue, understand the context and be flexible enough to provide the right inclusive um, um, solution. Uh, and the protective elements are, uh, you know, taking into account, um, you know, ACEs uh, and SEND needs, making sure we understand that. And we're pushing forward the trauma-informed approach. And we know that there's a, there's a, we've got a training package in place for all schools uh, it across Peterborough that they can access um, for trauma informed. And we're trying to link that in with Cambridgeshire Police again to try and have that joint approach to trauma informed work. Uh, and of course, that 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 final one is a really important one that we recognise that the behaviour is communication. It's a shout out for help. So we need to demonstrate we need to react to that rather than um, think about anything that's punitive in terms of our responses. Um, Richard Barnes Academy is the new PRU, uh, that's the name of the PRU now, uh, it's been there, I think it's had, it, it's had it, an, an, its first year anniversary, so it's been with us for a while, we've been working closely with them and so far so good, they are doing a good job. Okay, um, said communication group, um, so it said on the agenda you wanted to talk about that, so as part of the um, strategy, uh, we, the the SEND strategy and the SEND strategic plan 
we have um, set up a, or re-established re the Centre Communication Group across Peterborough and Cambridgeshire. Um, and we've got a new SCOMS strategy, CENTCOM strategy, uh, which, and these are the areas that we, um, that are our aims uh, that we hope to deliver through that. Uh, family Voice is a part of the comms group. So uh, they will, you know, Louise knows all about what we're trying to do. Uh, some of the highlights, I think, that we're, that, we're, that, we're, that we're trying to push forward is to build upon the success of our uh, newsletter that goes out to parents. Uh, we've got a newsletter going out next week, parents. We, we're trying to build in elements from health and social care into that letter. And we'd also like to build in a section where parents themselves can write something in the letter if they want to feedback on something or share any good news um, or, or issues that they want to highlight. So we want that newsletter to be a very much co-produced and cooperative approach to all, all the things so we can share it. Uh, and we hope that that will go out every half term and twice a year there will be a joint one with Cambridgeshire so we can look at the regional issues and share and respond to those. Um, okay, that's the end of the presentation. Do we have any questions on what we've covered? Any questions from people? Okay, shall we, do we want to move on to the local offer and then I'll open it up with some more uh, questions after that. Is that helpful? Haven't got any hands up, uh, Louise. So, Roger are, you, Roger, are you happy to just um, talk a little bit about the local offer? Yeah, first off, though, can you all hear me again? Yes, perfect. Okay, Thank you. it's just that during that presentation, my everything just completely locked up and I had to lock out again. Um, so I'm going to try and share the presentation. Uh, just see, hopefully it'll pick that up. So has it appeared yet or it's the usual it thing? Looks, I'm not sure. It looks like it's about to do something. Oh, yes. We just need it on the slideshow, Roger, that's all. Yeah, yeah, it's just that I'm working off three screens and it's kind of the balancing act of spinning plates, so. You're doing well. Go on, go on, do it, do it. You can see how it's just running so slow, it won't play. Are you getting to see the slideshow yet? Because I'm not, I can just see the PowerPoint platform so we've got it but it's it it's it's not big not one side at a time we can see them all yeah so what's happening is no matter how much i'm pressing slideshow it's not opening up yeah click from the so i'm gonna have to just do it one slide at a time is that okay click yeah. from the beginning roger all right okay That's what I mean when it runs so slow, you do a click and then half an hour later, it's still not doing anything. And then it locked up on me. Still not doing it, is it? Oh, here we go. Oh, we could be there. Oh, we have lift off. Well, it's blank at the moment for me. And for me at the moment, but it might come up, give it a little second. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I think it will get there. It's just it's running so slow, which is why normally I don't have my video on. Um, what I might do is I might just put my, well, no, because when I put my video off before while you were presenting, it just threw me out. Oh. Still nothing. Oh, hang on. There we go. There's a little blue thing going around. I think while that's just all going round, um, rather than wasting time with it just for now, is that um, the Peterborough Information Network, for those who don't know, is um, it's a website with a lot of information for the residents of Peterborough to be able to find anything out about um, adult social care and send. Um, if this ever opens up, what, what you need to do is the easiest way to find it is to use Google and put in information network. 
and you'll only have to do that once. If you then save it on your bookmarks, then you're ready to go any other time. But um, it will find it if you put in the PIN, P-I-N, but better to be information network. Um, now, the problem then is that if this had worked, but it's still blank, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try escape and just see if I can come out of this and try and do it as individual slides. Problem is for me is it's Zoom. I don't get this with Teams. It just all works and goes okay. But on Zoom, and I'm not on Citrix either, so here we go. Hopefully this will get us back. It's Peterborough and Zoom, Roger. Peterborough just doesn't like Zoom, I've decided. Yeah, it's just whenever you get a Zoom meeting, you just think, oh no, I hope I've not. And then it's the worst of the, the lot, because quite often you just talk, don't you? And you don't have to do a presentation. But when you do that, it's just. Come on. Sheila, uh, Louise, do you want to do, well, until it comes up, is there anything else you want to just say about the pin from almost, because you do use it, is there any feedback you've got about what we can do better or your experiences? Oh, hang on. Yeah, um, your experiences of it, because I don't think I'm going to get this presentation working. So uh, generally speaking, when we've gathered feedback, and I know we've said this before, it's not that people don't like it, it's people just don't know it exists. And when people do find it, they then say they actually find it quite useful. And I know that the feedback we get for those that have used it, so they actually quite like the way the, the uh, pages are changing and the information is easy to digest. So it, it's one of those things it's around raising awareness of it, which fits with the send comms strategy, but also then just keeping being responsive because uh, one of the things that we've found quite um, helpful as a forum, and I know the reps said they find helpful is when we have the sessions where we sit together and write the pages together as a group so that we know that they're parent focused. I don't think um, Laura and Asta, have you got any feedback from parents you've spoken to about the local offer? Um, the only thing that I can say, Louise, is it is the whole um, letting people know the local offer is there. Um, I, I, I can only really comment on that, that people don't know it's there and using the keywords to be able to find the, the information that they do want to be able to access. Um, the, and, and the other, sorry, one more thing I just thought, um, sometimes the information is out of date. And I know that's a problem with lots of things. As soon as information is put on there, very quickly it goes out of date. Um, so it's just find a way of trying to keep it as up to date as possible. But no, it's, it's a really good, it's a really valuable document. Now I know it's there, I'm, I'm on it, um, but it's just trying to promote it. I think it's just because it's called the local offer. People are like, I don't know what that is. Um, and it's not, and I don't think, actually, I think it's useful for all parents, not just send parents. I think it's a really useful uh, document for, for all parents to be able to access. So there we go. I actually agree with that. And you wonder is, because the local offer is, 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 you know, we have to provide something called the local offer, but there's no reason why we couldn't think of a different name, local offer, and then something else that means something to parents and carers. And Louise, it might be something you want to take away and think about, you know, what is it we could call it? We can say local offer and then something else that would actually point people, people to that. So I think that's quite, that's quite um, important. One of, one of the areas I know that people um, ask more information was in particular was on health. And I know that we've been working with our health colleagues to develop the health information for people. And that's a real big um, step forward. So I'm really, really pleased about it. And I think my, my message today would be if there's other things that aren't on the local offer that people want to see or think would be helpful to others, please, please, you know, let us know. Um, just about the health pages as well, Wendy. I, I was speaking to Siobhan about them previously, and they are so different compared to where they are before. The information is easy, it's not difficult to understand, it's clear, and it's what parents want. It's definitely based on what parents have said the issues are. And it was quite interesting unpicking the health pages um, together with um, Jackie and with Roger and Siobhan, and also um, Pinpoint, to look at to actually 
what what was there and why it wasn't working and what we've done to make it work and if you, if you read the pages now you'll see they make a lot more sense they flow a lot better and i think that's something that we, that works with the local offer is around actually writing those pages as um but as you said it's about knowing that it exists and maybe finding a different name so parents do go and start using it more thanks Therese. um i think roger's probably still trying is he gone probably trying to uh to access that again so while while we're waiting for him you know in, in the spirit of being you know open honest and sharing i i did just want to say is that we do know that um during the pandemic there were some services particularly from our health colleagues that weren't as available to parents and and carers um and probably you will know the reason that was is that there was a mandate from nhs england that all of our uh, health professionals needed to bend themselves towards supporting our hospital and the vaccination program and i know that was that was very difficult for people. And I certainly had a meeting with one of my health colleagues, the chief nurse with a group of parents actually, just to discuss where the challenges um, were for them. The other bit for me also, as you will know that uh, we, we and every other authority is, is lobbying nationally around the resources we have for children uh, with special educational needs and disabilities particularly as we hear feedback from parents and carers about actually if there was more uh, support, wider uh, range of support available for our children who receive SEN support and don't have an education care and health plan. We might not have to move to an edu care, uh, education care and health plan. And that's something we all feel we're really strongly about is that we want to strengthen our early help offer. But the challenge for us is, is particularly uh, around resources. So again, that's just something I wanted to be quite open and honest with you about. I don't know if anybody's got any comments or thoughts on that. Um, Sheila, is there, what I might do is um, just share the work we've been doing that we've, I know we've shared it with yourself around our latest topic of importance, which is on that area. So one of the things we've been doing uh, recently with parents and certainly our chat room has been very, very busy on Facebook is looking at uh, what support means to parents, what it means to be a parent carer to parents and um, what the issues are. And we found that parental resilience is actually very low at the moment, um, which mirrors our annual report. And that parents are saying that actually what they'd like is more um, support early on in the process. So um, things like help with meeting attendance, help with form filling, um, help understanding the system. And I've presented that as a topic of importance, which will be uh, sent to the local authority at the next to send project board and will be available on our website soon. And what we're going to suggest is things like actually um, one of the big discussions we've had is more guides and documents that tell you how to navigate the system, more use of the local offer and seeing this, uh, the solutions that parents have. So we want to ask parents if they've got solutions or ideas that they think might actually make it easier for them to navigate the system or what things might help earlier on so that they don't end up with a lot of pressure and stress later on down the line. So we will be putting a call out to parents for more ideas of how we can help. Um, Sorry, um, I, I was going to pick up um, just to say about uh, one of the most recent uh, developments. I know some of you on this call will have been involved in the development of the all age autism strategy, which, you know, there's been a wide range of partners, uh, parents and carers and forums involved in the development of that. And I have to say, I think it's been led by the, the children's uh, area, really, though it, it is an all age strategy. Uh, and we've actually got sign off uh, for that to go out for wide consultation with people. So I just want to make a shout out that when you receive uh, uh, information about um, your views on that strategy, it's really, really important that you do feed back to us on that. We were able to get the, um, the new mayor of the combined authority to also add his support to that strategy is really important in terms of his role around infrastructure when we think about um, independent living for children and young people who do need uh, adaptations as well. I don't know if anybody wants to comment on their involvement in that the development of that strategy on the call. Asta, are you able to say a couple of words? I know you've been very heavily involved from our, from our end in the meetings.
We're having a bit of a problem with sounds today, aren't we? <laughs> this is going to be interesting when it's edited with all these sort of <laughs> gremlins. Do you, want me to say few, do you want me to say a few words about the send review while we're trying to get this? Oh, Asta, we can't hear you. She's asking if we can hear her. No, we can't. Oh, right. Yes, yeah. Sheila, are you happy to talk about the same review while Asta tries to get her sound yeah. back? <laughs> And some fill-ins yeah um we uh, so the send review that's nationally um as you know the code of practice which governs everything that happens in terms of send has been reviewed is it's you know this review has been going on for some time as as you may be aware um we were hoping to see something in the spring and then we were hoping to see something this summer i think it's very likely that we will see something at the beginning of the autumn i think that's the latest you know that's what's we're hearing at the moment i think understandably it needs sign off at the, the highest level if you like and because of everything else that is going on you know i think achieving that has been challenging um i think we can expect to to see a little bit um more about preparation for adulthood there which has been a very strong theme for us in Peterborough because that's the whole point of the reforms isn't it and that's the whole point of all that we do in SEN to make sure that you you know our young people your young people um, are able to to achieve and and be happy you know in the future and and live uh, fruitful and fulfilling lives that's the whole point of everything so we expect to see an emphasis on that and a lot on what Wendy has picked up <coughs> you know, the, the duties and the the cooperation and the work around um, other agencies involvement in this this agenda so I'm just going to do a plug really for the regional forum which takes place every two weeks and um, Family Voice have the link if you want to join and are part of Family Voice, you are really welcome to that regional forum. And in September, Andre Imick from the DfE will hopefully, if it's been published, talk about the SEND review. And everybody is welcome. That's a totally open forum. And it's your chance, if you like, to ask the DfE questions. Thanks, uh, uh, Sheila. So any other comments on either what Sheila's said or anything that you else you've heard today um I mean I'm I'm keen to hear from the things you've heard today is there anything else any of you think that we should be focusing on that that we are that we aren't I mean uh, uh, I think Shaz did talk about one bit that she was concerned about that we'll pick up and go back but anybody else is there anything that you think that we could be doing better or more of that you haven't heard is within our plans anyway. Laura, have you got your hand up? Go ahead, Laura. Um, I've just had several conversations about early years, and um, I know it's always difficult when you don't get a diagnosis very early. I mean, my daughter was born with Down syndrome. It was very obvious very early on that she was going to need support. We were really lucky that we got support from day one. Um, I just feel that um, for lots of families, um, I don't know it all comes down to diagnosis, but the earlier they can get any sort of information, and even if it's, you know, like uh, information that's sent out with preschool, even if your child's not got SCN, but to include your information or contact details really early on, so somebody knows where to go when they do need that support, even if they find out two or three years later, if you're always giving out the information, then it's always going to be there, even if it's in the back of their red books when they have their babies. Everybody needs support at some point in their life, whether it's SCN or whether it's emotional, something. I think the more we promote early on, then the less, what's the word I mean? You know, the, the earlier you can get the information out, the better it is for everybody. Thank you, Laura. And I, I will take that back because one of the things we have done, I don't know if you've heard about our best start in life strategy, uh, that's a strategy that covers pre-birth to five and okay. it's a multi-agency strategy which involves like health visitors, midwifery, children and family centres in our early year settings to name but a few who are you know working uh, better together so to speak um, and one of the priorities they've got is specifically around looking to identify children with uh, uh, special educational needs and disabilities earlier yeah. Uh, but I think you're, the, the bit for you about actually can we put some 
you know, information in something all parents get where they can get help and advice or whatever it might be is really important. So mm. I'll make sure I feed it back to that team. Well, then, sorry, what did you call that, that group? What was it called? It's called the Best Start in Life Strategy. Thank you. And I can make sure that we send the strategy to uh, Family Voice so you've got that. Thank you. Can I, can I, can I just add to that? As, as part of the communication group, we are focusing in on that early, um, that early intervention stuff, and you know that that's going across the whole of the strategy, uh, including we, we we're working with the best start in life strategy colleagues to start the preparation for adulthood work at that point. So yeah. that kind of thing we're looking at, you know, we should be starting at not 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 looking at where, you know, we know that we get a lot of. Um, cliff edges at 16 and then again at 18, 19 and at 25. We shouldn't be dealing with them at that point. We should be dealing with them from birth and and, and, and panning out. So we're looking at a, a number of pathways that will help to, to support that across principle. Thanks, Tony. Laura? You're on mute, Laura. Yeah, sorry, I had an, I have another question. When you mentioned preparing for adulthood, and this is not the Laura show, I'm really sorry. Um, so my daughter is now 13 and we are heading into the preparing for adulthood, you know, 14, 15. I would have really liked to have known a little bit about that at maybe uh, transitioning to secondary school age. I would have liked to know what to prepare. All of a sudden, my daughter's going to be in different services. And yes, it's a nice, smooth transition. But I would have liked to know that if I hadn't have heard something, I should have heard something by the time she's about 13, 14. Um, so maybe when we are looking at secondary schools, maybe information needs to go out about what to expect in the next few years. And that's only a personal experience. And I know you can't, you can't suit everybody. And it's only through hindsight that you're able to pick these things up. But it was just something I thought, goodness, if I wasn't part of this group, I wouldn't have even known to expect and to look for all the support that is out there for preparing for adulthood. It's no, I think it's a really, and, and, a really Im, Im, important point. It's the one thing that most people have greatest anxiety, and I think the sooner we can give that, it also helps parents prepare their children for what to expect at the earliest possible stage. That's the big thing, isn't it? So I think Tony's point about even in the early years, making sure you've got the information so you know what to expect in terms of moving to adulthood is absolutely right. Can I just say yeah. something? Sorry. Oh, can anyone hear me? Yes, can hear you now. Asta. Oh, wow. Somebody can hear me. That's brilliant. All I need is to re restart my headset. Um, in terms of PFA, I think that's uh, quite a crucial point. But having said that, PFA doesn't start when a child turns, you know, 13, 14, 15. When you really think about it, you know, when you start taking your child to, to, to primary school, even, you know, or even in, in nursery. What do you do with your child? You prepare them for adult life. That's why you teach them, you know, how to talk, how to walk, how to do every single little bit independently. You know, so preparing for adulthood starts much earlier. And I agree with what Laura says that we need to prepare our children's, uh, children earlier. I mean, some parents might be a little bit more proactive. They might start thinking about it when their children are still in primary education. However, some parents obviously trying to deal um, with the services, with the children, you know, with the schools and everything else, they don't think about it sort of far ahead. They are struggling to deal with day-to-day -day life and they need to know it a little bit more in advance. And that's something that actually has been picked up um, and during um, some partnership meetings as well as Offset picked it up as well, that PFA needs to be a priority much earlier on I mean, I have a 12 years old child and I've been preparing her for adulthood for a while now. I know she's only 12, but the earlier we start, the better successes we can have. Thank you, Asta. That's really, really helpful. Any other thoughts? So, Roger, are you, um, are you up for having another go or what do you want to do? You're on mute at the moment. Sorry, I was on mute, the usual. Uh, third time lucky, if you like. Last time I was thrown out again, and it took about 10 minutes to get back in, but I'm more than happy to just give it a go if you want me to. 
Can we have one last try? Why not? Okay, let's Thank go. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Oh, can you see it? Yes. Working, it's good. All good. Right, okay, let's see how we go then. So basically, this is it. Now, well, I, uh, I need a drum roll for this from everyone <laughs> and a fun for Peterborough Information Network. So this is if you put in either PIN or Peterborough Information Network into Google, which is the quickest way to find it, you'll get this home screen. And I don't know, is my mouse showing up on the screen? Yes, it is. Good, so I can yeah. act as a pointer. So it's basically four blocks of information. So it means it's much easier to get in quite quickly. So here we have adult social care and here we have family information service. But for everyone today, it's this box here. And what we have in here when you click on it is that, um, in fact, I think the presentation takes me to it. Come on, move. Let's try anything here. Let me try a click. Oh, good. Gosh, I thought another. So, okay, when you've clicked on that big green box, you get this, which is the local offer homepage. And I don't know whether you can see the detail of it, but we've then got all the different headings for information that you need. But the, so you can go in two ways. If you wanted to know about health, you could press that health button or if there's any subject that you want to know, you can put it in on that search box there. So there's two ways of looking for it. Because I use the site a lot, I tend to just go and use these. But the, say you wanted the parent care participation page, you would just write parent care participation or anything at all that you're after. You just write that in there. So say we've clicked on health, that then takes you to a page for health. And when you search something on Google, what happens is, is that it will return a number of different things on that title. So it may be what Peterborough City Council does. It may be what Birmingham City Council does, everything. And, and then when, if you put in autism, you're going to get so many different returns from autism. And really, in a way, you're trying to condense that search. So. What the site does that Google doesn't is that if you click health local offer, then you're going to get on this page here everything in Peterborough for health in relation to the local offer. So you've got some static information on this side of the page and you can open up all of these headings to see um, like services by age group or health services in the community. Um, and it's a way of just once you're on this page and what people often tell us is that first off, they don't know the local offer exists. And that's because the local offer at meetings I go to nationally is one. Um, and everyone says the local offer is a, a bad term because no one really knows what it means, but we still have to go for it. So again, if we go to the, oh, hang on. I'm oh, Roger, 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 I've got a question from Louise. Yeah. Um, it's more of a comment. Um, so the only bit I'd say, Roger, and I'm not sure how it gets resolved, your search box at the top of, you know, the bit where you've got your little hourglass symbol. Yeah. Um, that's actually not the easiest to use because when you're typing in it, half the what you're typing is actually hidden and you end up only seeing the, the end bit. Does that make sense? So when you type it, it you can see a lot does, of it. Please. But do you know why it does it? Well, I'll tell you what happened is, is that because of the new accessibility legislation, we got an audit done by open objects. And one of the things they found was that by the words somehow appearing in the screen here meant it failed in the accessibility legislation. So they changed it and it has to be hidden which is crazy. So that's something that we haven't really got an answer to. I think in the end, we may have to get them to revert it back and it'll fail in terms of screen readers, but at least it will be for everyone else. But that was working and it's the accessibility change. So I'll, I'll, I've got ongoing with them on it, but um, I think I'll have a word with Jackie again, raise it 
because I think we're going to have to break the legislation just to get that bit showing. Um, and that's Let, why that fell like that. Let's take that away as an action, Roger. Thank you very much. Yeah. So what also happens is, though, is in terms of I mean, and the way when Jackie's done this presentation, there's normally on the left hand column, you get lots more information about useful documents and things. But what we try to do is if you're looking for who do you ask for help, we'll tell you roughly who you ask for, but then we'll do a link within that page that will point you off to lots of different places. So again, and each of those pointed off places would be the equivalent of a search on Google. But as I say, as the idea is we try to bring it all into one little place rather than you having to go everywhere on four or five pages of Google. And then the other side of it is that the, the Act also says that we need to make sure that the local offer is available for children and young people. And what we know is particularly on this source of page here, this is for parents and carers, and it's not really for children and young people. So what we did then is, is if you click on this box here, which is the website for children and young people, we've then created the local offer information for um, young people with SEND. So this was done in complete um, co-production with the youngsters. Before we even started anything on designing the site, we, we held some meetings with all the youngsters in the schools and asked them, what did they want to see? What questions did they want answering? So when we've got these sort of headings here of all about you, your health, your education, these were what they said they wanted to know. One of the really interesting ones was the your rights and your choices, but this is what they asked for. And then um, the next thing, don't know if it shows on here, when you go to one of the pages, you can see that there are pictures rather than words and one of the things they told us that they don't want to see any more than eight sentences on a page and they want to see lots of pictures and lots of videos so this is all and, and also about the answers they want to see so this particular site is for the youngsters to be able to go on to do their own browsing so it's not that comprehensive but they don't want that they just want some particular things they want so as an example learning disability health checks which we know at the moment through health people not taking up health checks um, is one of the key things and it also leads a little bit about to the transition because doctors tend uh, parents tend to take the children to the specialists and then when they hit that cliff face at 18 they don't know their GP and the GP doesn't know them. So one of the key things about a health check is to make sure that you do go and get to know your GP so that as you're nearer to when things change, you've got that little bit more knowledge. But equally then is that if a youngster is worried about going for the health check and what it involves, we've got all of these videos. And again, that's what they want, that they can just click on and see how a health check works. This one particularly is a very, very good one. People like that one. So um, I think, yeah, so have you heard of the local offer? And at least some of the parents at Family Voice Peterborough have, but a lot of other parents haven't. We've done so much work. We've had posters up before COVID. We've had posters up in doctor's surgeries, in pharmacists, in the libraries, in sports centres and in the days when we used to be able to attend lots of different meetings that the parents would go to, we've always had a stand where we have cards, business cards with the link to the local offer on but it, we've been at it now for three or four years and, and, and I know it's the same with every local authority in the country, every parent in every local authority is saying they haven't heard of the local offer and yet they'll have been on websites and used it. They just hadn't realized it's the local offer. Um, so today almost for me doing this and Jackie is one of our trying to just spread the word, but it's, it's, a, it's an uphill battle, but we, we keep battling on. Yeah, I think Jackie at then this stage took people onto the local offer, but I don't think with the time that we've got, um, 
what I would normally do when I used to do my presentations, I would actually do a quick test and ask people to say, what do you want an answer to at the moment? And we'd look and see if we could find it on the local offer. And a lot of the time we did, sometimes we didn't. And then that means we go away and make sure we find it and we put it up on the local offer. So the next time someone uses it and is looking for something, because everything trends, and if that trend isn't covered, we'll make sure we cover it really quickly. So we try to be really reactive in how we add information onto the website. And I think that would have been the end of the presentation then. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, Roger. That's incredibly um, helpful. Any comments from people or questions? We've got some uh, comments in the chat, which is brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, anything else people would like to ask today? No? When oh, can it, I, oh, sorry, Lou. Would it be helpful if I just uh, if I just ask, if they don't mind, Shaz, Laura and Asta, just to give a quick update on the work that they're doing, just so that anybody else listening knows what we're up to as a forum? Would that of be course. okay? Of course. Is, is that all right with the three of you? I've just put you on the spot. Are you happy, the three of you, just to give a quick update of your work, please? Yeah, it's fine, not a problem. Actually, I'll go first then, since I spoke first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on then. Um, hi everyone, I'm Shazi Ahmed, I'm a parent rep with um, Family Voice Peterborough. Um, basically the work I'm doing at the moment is the SEND Partnership Forum, so I'm doing that um, along with Sheila um, and everyone else, so that's really good. Um, I've also participated in the EHCP training, so the statutory training alongside the health, uh, the um, professionals with the SENCOs and with parents as well. So I found that really useful just for myself as well. And um, being part of that group, that was really helpful. And I'm also started some work with going to start um, a first coffee, coffee morning with um, the passport office. So there's a group of parents who um, are looking into some additional support. So I'll be starting that tomorrow. So that I think that would be really helpful for Peterborough parents. Thank you. Um, I'll go next. So, um, sorry, Asta. Sorry. No, that's okay, don't worry. Oh, well, I'll do, I'll do mine. So just quickly, um, I've been working with Ed on a piece of work for uh, Jonathan Lewis, where we are looking at the school directories. And uh, the information that's on the local offer is great. However, it doesn't go deep enough for some of our families. Basically, we are looking to provide for each school to provide almost a front sheet, which is going to um, give them the information they need to be very quickly look at that school and decide whether it's suitable for them so we're looking at things like obviously um Ofsted and uh, staffing levels and things like that but parents wanted things like um dinner provision you know um staffing levels they wanted to know um the SCN information so basically we're just looking at information and trying to put it on one page but also try and look at a way of trying to keep that as up to date as possible um, the other thing that I'm doing is updating the service directory um, which is a document which contains useful information for us to be able to give our families which include things like charity information um, and just local information that, that, that they would find useful so that's what I'm doing at the moment thank you Hi everyone, last but not least. <laughs> so um, my name is Asta, as I said before. Um, for the past sort of um, year and a half or something, um, one of the main things that I was doing, um, working for EHCP delivery during COVID, obviously uh, during these difficult times, it was quite crucial for the parents to have the knowledge and for the local authority to know what the parents actually want during these difficult times. Um, we have also uh, stopped for a little, local authorities stopped it for a little while because of COVID. But then as soon as it was possible, resumed uh, all the work that was due to be done on a written statement of action. As you are pro or probably are aware uh, that a local authority had an inspection, something that seems to be such a long time ago, obviously, because of COVID, everything has changed so much. Um, However, the work has been resumed and we are working together uh, to ensure that um, everything that Ofsted and CCG has said, all the things that are going to be met. Um, also been working on um, um, 
mental he mental health for uh, young children with uh, SEM needs. Um, what else? <laughs> Uh, sorry, got my mind's gone a bit blank there. Um, also, the big work was uh, preparing for adulthood as well to ensure that all the gaps for children, especially from the age of 16 to 18, are being filled and the parents are well informed, parents and the children are being well informed on what they can expect and where do they need to go to, to get further notice, uh, further uh, help. Also, um, since, um, well, hopefully, most of the restrictions are going to be lifted quite soon. Um, the EHCP delivery co during COVID was one of the most helpful groups that have been recently attending. So we have decided to clean, to keep the group, uh, just change it slightly and uh, sort of rename it a bit in terms of EHCP improvement. So all the things that parents have been telling us, whether it is about annual reviews, about the process itself, about the forms, we're trying to ensure that it um, is suitable for those who need to access the information. I think that would be all from me. Asta, I just want to say that I've sort of really appreciated your input in some of our strategic meetings. So you've certainly attended a, a number of our executive meetings with councillors. Uh, and you've certainly put forward, you know, the, the, the positives for all the areas for improvement to make sure that we have got transparency. Um, and, you know, that's not easy when you've got, you know, people you don't particularly, particularly know. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Sheila, Sheila, Wendy even. Um, I, is it right if I just give a quick update of some of the more broader stuff we're doing as a forum, just so people know? Yeah, that's fantastic. So we've started some work with um, Jonathan Lewis and he's brought in admissions, transport, school improvements, virtual schools, a number of other areas. What we're looking at doing is trying to improve the relationship between parents and professionals at setting level, particularly in mainstream schools, from early on in the process as, as we can manage. So let's try and make the, the journey for parents better and to help schools also understand better the journey of um, SEND families. So that's a much broader piece of work and some of the work that um, Shaz and Laura will feed into that work. We're also working more broadly with health around transforming care and also around um, hearing impairments, a group that's called Chiswick, um, which is an acronym. I can't remember the exact group, but that's the group that ASTA goes to. And we're also working quite closely with um, Dr. Reddy to try and actually improve um, access to um, neurodevelopmental service and CAMS via the Child Development Centre. So it's a sort of more broad engagement. We've also been involved in the autism strategy and obviously the SAN strategy more widely and the uh, comms element that comes off of that. And I know we've produced a lot of um, we've co-produced certainly uh, through the last 18 months, a lot of literature and information that's gone out to parents. And so what we found is that the one thing that seems to come through everything we do is that getting communication right early on does help the parent journey. And I just think that there's a lot more that we could do. And if anybody wants to get involved with us, they're more than welcome to come forwards. Never say no to anybody wanting to help us out and share their voices. Oh, I completely, sorry, I'm going to jump in here completely. Um, I was meant to say about the all age autism strategy and what it was absolutely wonderful to see joining all the different groups is how many people are actually eager to help. So whether it was um, officers from a local authority, whether it was from a police or, or, or anything at all. And it was an amazing, absolutely amazing to see how innovative people are and how much they actually want to ensure that all people with autism, regardless of their age, have all the information they need, all the help they need in order to be as successful in life as they can, in order to be as independent as they can. And I think that's absolutely amazing. And uh, um, as soon as a strategy is going to be published, everybody can have the word as well, can have they say what they think is right, what they think is don't right. Obviously it's very difficult to <laughs> please everyone, but you know we try our best. Thank you, Asta. That's really helpful. Any other final comments from anybody? So can I just say thank you to everyone who's contributed today and to those parents and carers that have joined us. I hope you've found it interesting and useful. And we've agreed with Louise that we will have uh, regular sessions like this and encourage as many 
um, parents and carers uh, as we can to try and join us. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.